Let's take a look at locating holes in SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric. Here I am starting out in SOLIDWORKS. To create a hole, you have a command called the hole wizard. And when I click on it, the interface opens on the left. And this is quite a beautiful interface. You have your different hole types. So for example, right now I have one with a counter bore and you've got your drop down list for the standard that you want to use and you can configure how you want this hole to be made. But in this video, we're going to take a look at locating the holes in the model. We'll go through the different types in another video. So I will go to the positions tab in the command. And now it tells me to select the face for the hole or slot position. And to create holes on multiple faces, you can click on the 3D sketch button. I'm going to select on this surface. And then you can see a preview of the hole as it will be created. I'm going to left mouse click. And one thing that you can do in here is create multiple holes within the same feature. Be aware in Creo that is added in Creo Parametric 8.0 to be released on April 28th. 2021 and okay so here I'm going to position another one over here and then for the last one let it snap to being in line with both of them so in that way I have the locations of the four different holes and when you take a look at this right now I am in a sketch for locating these different holes and right now again I can put in some more holes in here if I want but in order to define the position we're going to use the dimension command and so I can dimension and say hey let's dimension this point from this plane over here and then I will left click to locate it and then let's type in a number and I can continue doing that for the locations of the other different holes that I want to specify. Let's use this dimension. I'll configure it to be 40. And then I can continue doing that for all the other different locations and punch in the numbers. Okay, there we go. If my dimensioning scheme seemed a bit haphazard, it was. I wasn't really uh, thinking too much about how I wanted them to be located. So there I have the four different holes. I will hit the check mark in order to complete the feature. Let's expand the whole feature. And you can see in here that I actually have two different sketches. Here's sketch 13, and when I click on it, it shows all the different dimensions that I put in there. There's a little minus sign next to the sketch, meaning I missed a dimension. It's not fully located. And for the other sketch, that's actually defining the shape of the hole. Let me zoom in over here, and you can see the hole dimensions for the counter bore and the actual hole itself. Okay, let's deselect everything. One other thing that I want to show you, let's create a hole on this curved surface. So when I go to the hole wizard, I will leave the same definition as I had for the previous hole. I'm gonna to go to the positions tab and I'm gonna select this curved face. And when I select the curved face, then we can specify where the location of the hole will be. And I haven't left clicked yet. You can see that there's a little XY on the screen. That's an indication that I'm actually doing a 3D sketch. Let me left click to locate the hole. And now I can go to my smart dimension and I can pick the center of the hole and the surface that I want to dimension it to. And then left click to locate the dimension. Let's change this to a value of 100. And for the other dimension, I can dimension from here to this particular plane. You'll notice that I'm getting a linear dimension. Let's change this to a value of 30. And that way we have our hole positioned here in the model. Let's say that I actually want to, oops, hold on. Holding down the wrong keys on the keyboard as I'm moving this around. Uh, let's say I wanted to use an angle to dimension this. Well, you can put in some reference geometry and then use some of the different relations in order to position the point for the location of the hole exactly where you want it to be. And that way you could get the angle. Let's hit the check mark. 
and hit the check mark to complete the whole feature itself. And again, if I expand the feature in the tree, you can see that we have two different sketches and the first sketch is actually a 3D sketch. So that's how you can locate holes in SolidWorks. Now I am in Creole Parametric, very much a similar looking model. Let's take a look at locating holes here. So to create a hole, we have the command right here. And instead of having a vertical interface, it has a horizontal interface at the top of the screen. I'm going to show you the placement tab. And so the first thing that you pick is going to be the surface where you want the hole to be located. We've got some dimensions on the screen. I'm just going to change the depth to two next just to remove one of the dimensions. And we also have these different handles that you can drag for your dimension references. For example, I could grab this handle and drag it to that particular plane and we get a dimension I can double click on it and change the value and then grab this other one and drag it to what I want to use as the dimensioning reference that particular surface and let me change this dimensional value so there I have the first hole located here in the model let me hit the check mark or the middle mouse button and again placing multiple holes in the same feature that'll be available in Creo 8. Let's create a, another hole and I want to show you I'm going to pick the same surface that I did before just a little different way of doing things. When I drag those different handles to references that's using a linear dimensioning scheme. If you go to the drop down list you have a variety of different dimensioning schemes in here. So for example let's take a look at doing coaxial and for the placement, now I'm going to hold down the control key, and I have a datum axis here in the model. Let's change the depth again to two next, just so I have one fewer dimension on there, and hit the check mark or the middle mouse button. I'm going to create a datum point feature real quick. Click on the point icon, and I'm going to locate a point on this surface, and let's activate the offset references collector, and I'm just going to pick couple different references for locating the hole. I'm not going to bother changing the values. Let's turn on the point display. Now for creating a hole, I can simply pick that point and that'll define the location of the hole. Once again, let me change the depth and hit the check mark or the middle mouse button. So uh, just to edit definition of that one real quick. If you go to the placement tab here, you can see that point is grayed out because it automatically selected the point. And that point can be on a surface and that can actually be in space. You can create points on the fly by going to the datum dropdown list over here. And this will end up creating datum geometry that'll be embedded within this particular whole feature. All right, let's cancel out of that one. Let's see, let's take a look at another way of locating the hole. We'll go to the hole command. Again, I will pick this surface for the placement surface. And a couple other techniques that you have for dimensioning this are radial and diameter. And back when I used to teach Pro Engineer, these, for some reason, would always confuse students a little bit. What I always think of them as if I was trying to define a pattern of holes around an axis, that's what radial and diameter are good for, especially for doing a pattern of bolts around a flange. So for the dimensioning references, I will activate the offset references collector. If I pick an axis and then a plane like this datum plane over here, oops, here I accidentally got the linear method because you can do that we change to radial now you'll notice that I have an angle so I could say hey let's put this at a 45 degree angle from the planar reference and then a distance like 100 from that center point and so there is the radial method the difference between the radial method and the diameter method well take a look at that 100 dimension when I change this, it now goes to 200. So this would be the diameter of, say, a bolt circle that you are creating. Okay, that's good for that one. And the last one I want to show you, let's say that we wanted to put a hole on this curved surface. Well, I'll go to the hole command. I will pick the surface. And 
if I go to the placement tab, you'll see that this is automatically set to use the radial dimension method. And let me activate my offset references collector. And I'll dimension from, say, this plane. And this will establish the angle of the hole from the plane. Let me hold down the control key and pick this surface. And we have our different dimensions, like I could change this to 100 for the distance. And then I can change this angle to 30 degrees from the horizontal. And for the depth, let me right click over the drag handle and just choose two next so it just passes right through the model. Let me turn off my axis point and plane display. So there you can see the different holes that are created. So the big difference in locating holes in SOLIDWORKS versus Creo Parametric. In SOLIDWORKS, you're using points, and those points can be in a 2D or a 3D sketch. When you are doing them in Creo Parametric, you have a variety of different dimensioning methods like linear, coaxial, on-point, radial, and diameter. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.careerwindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.